Okay, so in this video we'll be looking at graphs of exponential and logarithmic functions. And we'll look at these together because obviously they're closely connected in terms of shape. Equally, you should have um, met them before in Year 11, so this is um, very much a, a review. Um, so let's start with the exponential functions. So functions of the form uh, y equals a to the power of x are called exponential functions, as long as a is a positive real number other than 1. Okay, and that's because, I think we've talked about this in a previous video, if a is a negative value, if you've got, you know, negative, sorry, if you've got like negative 2 to the power of x, that's going to oscillate above and below the x-axis um, because um, even powers of um, negative numbers are positive, but odd powers of negative numbers are negative. Um, so by definition, that's not an exponential function, so it needs to be positive. Um, and it also can't be 1, because 1 to the power of x is just 1 regardless of what x is, and so that's just the horizontal line y equals 1, hence not an exponential function. It exists, but it's not an exponential function. Um, okay, so we want to complete the sketches of the following graphs. So on the left, we have y equals 2 to the power of x. So just looking at what changes if we're changing the base. So y equals 2 to the power of x. Um, if we set, um, post, sorry, if we label some points, so when x is equal to 0, 2 to the power of 0 is 1. When x is equal to 1, let's say, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So we go through the point 1, 2. When x is equal to negative 1, 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 half. Okay, and we could obviously continue on forever, but um, those give a good sense of the shape. So thinking then about how y equals 10 to the power of x is 0, just as another example. So obviously when x equals 0, y is still 1, regardless of what the base is. So regardless of the base, 5 to the power of x, 10 to the power of x, 173 to the power of x, they're all going to have y-intercepts at 1. Um, but this time when x equals 1, y is going to be 10. And when x equals negative 1, y is going to be 1 10. So we get a much more extreme um, exponential shape. Um, some people talk about it as a dilation. I want you to be careful about confusing that with the dilations we've talked about previously, dilation from the x-axis and dilation from the y-axis. We can still dilate these shapes. Um, it is technically a dilation from the line y equals... Um, sorry, from the line y equals 1. Uh, but we don't tend to think about it that way. I would just think about it as being... Um, the, the shape that I start with. Um, so if it's 2 to the power of x, it's a bit less extreme in exponential shape. If it's 10 to the power of x, it's going to be more extreme. But realistically, if you're not drawing these two graphs on the same axes, um, it doesn't really matter how you draw it. You know, it's still the same shape. Um, it's going to be the points that indicate sort of how steep it is and hence, you know, um, that reflect whether you've got a, you know, 7 to the power of x or 2 to the power of x sort of graph. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Anything to the power of x is going to give you this exponential shape. So generally speaking, if f of x is a to the power of x, we're going to have an exponential graph. Its y-intercept is always going to be at 1. When x equals 1, y will equal a. And when x equals, further on there, when x equals negative 1, y will equal 1 on a. So just filling in the properties of this function, so f of negative 1, that is when x equals negative 1, y is 1 on a, f of 0 is 1, f of 1 is a, so those are sort of key points to give you a sense of where the graph is sitting. Equations of the asymptotes, so we have only one asymptote for an exponential graph, and that is a horizontal asymptote, and in this case it's the x-axis, which is y equals 0. Okay. So obviously, if we translate this shape up or down, the asymptote is going to move. Um, the domain of the exponential function is r, okay, and the range is r plus, okay. Or obviously, we can write that as zero to infinity if you prefer. As x approaches infinity, f of x also approaches infinity. So as we head off, as x gets bigger, um, y gets bigger, okay. Um, as x approaches negative infinity, uh, f of x or y approaches zero. And it's a one-to-one -one shape. Passes the vertical line test, also passes the horizontal line test. Right, so that's our basic exponential. Let's talk about the basic log shape, and then let's um, think about the transformations and sketch some graphs. So functions of the form y equals log a of x, again, where the same conditions that apply to a for the exponential also apply to a for the um, log. So base of an exponential and base of a log has to be a positive real number other than one. And um, we should recall that exponential and logarithmic functions are inverses. So if 
a, if f of x is a to the power of x, then the inverse of f is log base a of x and vice versa. So what do we know about the graphs of inverse functions? Let's use that fact to sketch the graph of the log function. We know that it is they are reflections in y equals x. Okay, so if we were to draw in the line y equals x, we know, um, you know, when we reflect something in y equals x, the x and y coordinates of everything change. So if our exponential graph goes through the point 0, 1, and if it goes through the point 1a, and if it goes through the point minus 1, 1 on a, then the log is going to go through all of the same points with the x and y values in, um, swapped. So if the exponential goes through 0, 1, the log is going to go through 1, 0. Okay. If the exponential goes through 1a, the log is going to go through a1. If the exponential goes through negative 1, 1 on a, the log is going to go through 1 on a, negative 1. Okay. If the exponential has an asymptote at y equals 0, then the log, in fact, let me just draw the log in a different colour. Sorry. So we decided that that's the point A1, this is the point 1, 0, and this is the point 1 on A, negative 1. If the original graph had an asymptote, um, yes, the exponential ha graph has an asymptote at y equals 0, then the log graph has an asymptote at x equals 0. Swapping x and y, and we get this reflected shape. Okay. So that is y equals log base a of x. All right, so for the log function, f of 1 on a is negative 1, f of 1 is 0, f of a is 1. So that's those three points we've just marked on. The equation of the asymptotes, there's only one asymptote for a log function, and it's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, which is the y-axis. The domain of a log function is the range of the exponential function, which was r plus, or we could write that as 0 to infinity. The range of the log is the um, domain of the exponential, which is r. And for the log graph, as x approaches infinity, so as x gets bigger, y is also getting bigger. It doesn't. It gets big slowly, but it still approaches infinity. Okay. As x approaches 0, um, so as we head towards the y-axis, the value of the function um, approaches negative infinity. And it's a one-to-one -one function. All right, then let's have a quick chat about the exponential function and the natural logarithm function. So that's where we're looking at a base of e. We introduced this at year 11. Um, so you could go back and look at um, the year 11 videos on this. Um, e is something is called is sometimes called Euler's number, but actually it's believed to be a false attribution. Um, it's also known as Napier's constant. Um, it's approximately equal to 2.718. Okay, there's a longer decimal representation written there. Um, it is an irrational number. The only exact and pre precise way to represent E is to write E. Um, so in the same way that when we want to talk about you know pi, we don't round it to 3.142 unless we Hold to round it to three decimal places, otherwise its exact representation is pi. Similar for thirds. There are a couple of, quite a few different technical definitions of how we can calculate E and how E comes about. Um, this one is really to do with a financial maths application of, um, you know, compound interest, putting a dollar in an account and compounding the interest at a um, I've forgotten the example, but compounding interest frequently and um, the limiting value is 2.718. Um, you don't need to know how to derive E, you simply need to know that it is um, an important number um, that's a little bit less than 3 really. And we commonly use it as the base of exponentials and as the base of logs. You'll see your CAS has dedicated E to the X button over here next to the number 1 on the left hand side. And, um, oh sorry, and uh, pressing control that button you'll get the natural logarithm so log base e okay so it's one of the standard uh, bases it's quite important when we come to differentiating the exponential function further down the track um, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x um, that's not true of all the other exponential functions so a derivative of 2 to the x is not is not 2 to the x. Um, so this one, this base of E has a special property where the gradient of the curve is the same as the y value of the curve at that point. But we'll get to that when we look at 
um, differentiating exponential functions further down the track. Otherwise, they're going to follow all the same properties as the more general y equals a to the power of x and y equals log base a of x that we've looked at. They'll go through 0, 1 and 1, e and negative 1, 1 on e, the exponential function. The log will go through 1 on e, negative 1, um, 1, 0 and e, 1. Again, where e is about 2.7. Applying our transformations to our log functions, um, so we know that we can dilate from the x-axis, sorry, log and exponential functions, we can dilate from the x-axis, which is when we multiply the function by a value, I've called it b rather than a, um, because we're using a as the base of our exponential here, so b times a to the power of x or b times log a of x. Let's be careful about, you know, 3 times 2 to the power of x is not 6 to the power of x. Okay, powers happen before multiplication in our order of operations. Um, so it's not 6 to the power of x, this is the graph of 2 to the power of x dilated by a factor of 3 from the x-axis. Um, dilating by a factor of 1 on n from the y-axis is when we have nx. Okay, And so in the exponential that will be a to the power of nx, in the log that will be log a of nx. Um, when we reflect in the x-axis, we stick the negative out the front, so negative a to the power of x or negative log a of x. Again, let's be clear about the fact that negative 2 to the power of x is not the same as negative 2 all to the power of x. You're not making the base negative. This is negative 1 times 2 to the power of x. Okay, so that's the reflection. Um, and again, that's to do with order of operations. Okay, it's power first and then multiply by negative 1. Um, reflecting in the y-axis, we make the negative, the x part of the function negative, um, and so it is a to the negative x would be a reflection in the y-axis, or log a of negative x would be a reflection in the x-axis. And translating um, to the left, sorry, that's to the right. My apologies, I think I might have changed that notation there. So if h is, we're assuming h and k are positive. Um, if we've got f of x minus h, we're going to the right by h. Um, and up by k by adding on the k at the end. So for the exponential, that would be subtracting h within the power of the exponential to move left and right, adding k afterwards onto the whole exponential to move up or down. Log base a of x minus h in the function and then the plus k separate to go up or down. Let's just have a quick play around with those. I'm just going to switch over to a graphing program and then we'll go along and um, work through some examples together. Okay, so here's the exponential function. Um, I've got it as 2 to the power of x, um, and I've got both the b, so the dilation from the x-axis and possibly reflection in the x-axis value. n will be dilation from the y-axis and possibly reflection in the y-axis. h, translation left and right, and k, translation up and down. At the moment, everything is set, so this is just the graph of y equals 2 to the power of x. If we were to have a look at each of those things, let's start with b. So B is about the dilation from the x-axis, so we see it's stretching away from the x-axis as we increase the value of B. If we make the value of B smaller than 1, that squashes it towards the x-axis. If B were to be 0, it's just what the whole equation is y equals 0, so it's not an exponential at all. But if B is negative, the shape is reflected in the x-axis. Okay. Um, N, sorry, I'm just going to put B back to 1. N is the dilations from the y-axis, so we know as we make N bigger, it's going to dilate towards the y-axis because we dilate by the reciprocal. So at the moment N is 2, that's a dilation by a factor of a half from the y-axis, so it's squashed in towards the y-axis. If we make N um, less than 1, it's going to stretch it out. Okay, so that's uh, N equals 0.5, so that's a dilation by 2 from the y-axis. And then if N were to become negative, um, we see that the shape has been reflected around the y-axis whilst also being dilated from the y-axis. Okay, let me make n back to 1. Um, if we have a look at h, h is about translating to the left and right. I've got it set up as x minus h, so if I make h bigger we're going to go to the right. So that is x minus um, 2. We've translated the graph to the right by 2. Um, if we make h negative, we're subtracting a negative. So at the moment, there's the equation. h is negative 1, so that's 2 to the power of x minus minus 1. So it's 2 to the power of x plus 1, and we have gone to the left by 1. Okay. So left and right with h, and then k is going to translate our graph, graph up or down. And obviously when we have a horizontal asymptote, translating the graph up or down is also going to move the asymptote. So we would need to draw that in as a straight dashed line and label it with its equation. 
making k negative, we'll obviously translate the graph down and then we will be crossing over the x-axis. We'll have x intercepts as well as an x-intercept as well as a y-intercept to calculate. Okay, so that's the exponential. Same things with the log. Okay, here's the basic log shape. If we have a look at b, I'll just let me close that. If we have a look at b, which is the dilation from the x-axis, we see it stretches away from the x-axis as we make b bigger. If we make b less than 1, it squashes in towards the x-axis. If b is 0, we don't have a log function at all. But if b is negative, it's now reflected in the x-axis, so the shape is going this way. Um, let me put b back to 1. If we have a look at n, so that's the dilation from the y-axis. So when we make n bigger, it's going to squash in towards the y-axis. Now I know that looks like it's moving up, but you can also think about that as the, the points are moving in towards the y-axis as you make n bigger. Okay. Um, it actually is also moving up. Uh, if we think about our log laws, um, let me just quickly, uh, I'll, I'll explain it when I get back over to the notes. I'll write out why it looks like the um, dilation from the y-axis is moving up and actually you can think about it directly as a translation up. Um, but if we make n smaller, sorry, n smaller than 1, it's moving away, dilating away from the y-axis. Okay, again, it looks like it's moving down, but you can still think about the point moving across this way. Okay, um, And then if n were to be negative, our graph is going to be reflected in the y-axis, so the shape will be around over here. Alright, we just put n back to 1. Um, if we look at h, is translating left and right, and the log graph has a vertical asymptote, so when we translate left or right, the asymptote is going to be moving as well. Okay, So this is the graph of log of x minus 1 to the right by 1, and this is the graph of log of x plus 1 to the left by 1. Okay, And so left or right, and then finally changing k translates the graph up or down. All right, let's just have a quick chat about um, the algebra of why the translation from the dilation from the y-axis, it is a dilation from the y-axis, but why actually we can also think about it for the log graph, a dilation from the y-axis as being a translation up or down, not by the same factor, but um, we'll have a look at that. Let me go back to the notes. Okay, so if we think about this log graph when we dilate from the y-axis, our log laws tell us that we multiply things together when we're adding two logs. So this is actually the same as log a of x plus log a of n. So it's also, it's also a translation up by log a of n. Okay. Um, so you wouldn't tend to describe it that way. Um, it's, it's more consistent with all your other functions to think about it as a dilation from the y-axis. But that's why it really did look like it, all it was doing was shifting up, and actually it is because it's the same thing. Um, but equally, it's also translating, dilating, sorry, from the y-axis as well. Okay, let's sketch some graphs. So example one, sketch the graph of y equals 5 to the power of x minus 1 plus 3. Okay, our basic graph is y equals 5 to the power of x. That doesn't really matter. If I'm not drawing two exponentials on the same um, axes with different bases, it doesn't really matter. It's still going to be an exponential shape. Um, we'll just worry about, um, we'll calculate various points which we need anyway when we draw the graph. Um, the minus 1 up here is translated to the right by 1 and the plus 3 here is up by 3. So we're going to take a basic exponential shape and translate it to the right by 1 and up by 3. Now up 3 is the important one there because that's going to move the asymptote. We always want to draw the asymptote in first. It gives us structure. And then we know it's going to go this way. There's no reflections, so there's no x-intercept to be calculated. We just need the y-intercept, okay, which will be y equals 5 to the power of 0 minus 1 plus 3. Um, so that is 5 to the negative 1 plus 3. 5 to the negative 1 is 1 fifth plus 3. So it's 3 and a fifth or um, 3 is 15 fifths, so 16 fifths. So it's just a bit above. Okay, so I'm going to mark that as 0 and, sorry, 16 fifths. And then we do need two points. Um, asymptote and minimum two points. 
um, always marking all axis intercepts. So given that we don't have an x-axis intercept here, we really do need another point. So I'm just going to have a look at um, you know, when x equals 1. Uh, y is going to be 5 to the power of 0 plus 3, so that's going to be um, 1 plus 3, sorry, so that's 4. Alright, so let's be a bit consistent with scale here, because so our asymptote has defined what our y-axis scale is. So that will be 4 up there. I've probably drawn my fifth a bit high, but it's hard to get close without while still maintaining your asymptotic behaviour. So x equals 1 and y equals 4. Um, Okay, so there's our graph. Let's have a look at the next one. Sketch the graph of y equals 2 minus e to the power of x. Okay, so our basic graph is e to the power of x. We are sketching negative e to the x plus 2, which is a reflection in the y-axis. So you want to think about any reflections first because that gives you your shape, you know, whether it goes this way or this way or this way or this way. Okay, so if we reflect in the, oh, sorry, not y-axis, in the x-axis. If we reflect in the x-axis, it's going to be down here, okay, and we're going up by 2. So that's important too because that's about our asymptote, okay, moving our asymptote up. And so we can see if we think about that shape going up, we're going to be crossing both the x and the y-axis in this instance, okay. All right, so let's calculate those points. Y-intercept is going to be y equals 2 minus e to the 0, so that's 2 minus 1, which is 1, and our x-intercept is going to be 0 equals 2 minus e to the x. So e to the x equals 2, and we're going to need logs to solve that. So x equals log base e of 2. And that's fine, we just mark it exactly with those coordinates. Alright, so let's think about what we have. Asymptote at 2. We drew my y axis a bit high. Um, in fact, Down a bit, I think. All right, so y equals two. Sorry, y equals two for this vertical asymptote, and we're going this way. The y-intercept is at 1. Now, again, you want to watch for consistency here. Your asymptote has defined the scale on your, your y-axis, so you now need to be consistent. 1 has to go here. 1 isn't up here. It's exactly halfway. Okay. So we want to make sure that we draw that. Let's draw it in our exponential shape. And let's just mark this point. There's no other numbers on the x-axis, so it doesn't really matter where that goes. And we're just going to label it as log e of 2. 0 and this one is 0, 1. Alright, example 3. Sketch the graph of y equals negative 3 times half to the power of x. Now, fractional bases can be a bit harder to think about. I think it's easier to think of this as negative 3 times, that's 2 to the negative 1 to the power of x, and so it's negative 3 times 2 to the negative x. Okay, so the negative from the negative 3 is a reflection in the x-axis, the negative up here that we've just found from the rewriting the half as 2 to the negative 1 is a reflection in the y-axis. So we're reflecting in both axes, which means our shape is going to be uh, down this way. Sorry, let's try that again. Our shape is going to go that way. Um, and then, that, oh, and we've got the dilation by a factor of 3. Dilation by 3 from the x-axis. Okay. So that'll come into effect when we calculate where this y-intercept is, and we're going to need an additional point because the um, graph is not going to cross the x-axis. So y-intercept, we let x equal 0. So y equals negative 3, oops, sorry, negative 3 times 2 to the 0. So it's negative 3 times 1, so it's just negative 3 for your y-intercept. And let's mark on another point, maybe when x is negative 1 y is going to be negative 3 times 2 to the negative negative 1, so 2 to the 1, so it's negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. Okay, so we're going to go this way, we're going to go through 0, 3, and then negative 1, 6, negative 1, negative 6, sorry. So 0, negative 3, and negative 1, negative 6. 
asymptote is the axis, so we don't need to draw that separately. All right, example four, got a couple more, some log graphs. Sketch the graph of y equals log 10 of 5 minus x. Okay, so remember this is the same as log base 10 of negative x minus 5. So we've got reflection in the y-axis and to the right by 5. Okay, so we're going to reflect in y and go to the right 5. Okay, so the log shape, remember, normally looks like this. Reflecting the y-axis, it's going to be a shape that goes this way, and then we're going to move it to the right by 5, so it's going to go this way. So we're going to cross x and y-axis. We're going to have a vertical asymptote when x equals 5. And the whole graph sits to the left of that asymptote. Let's calculate our intercepts, y-intercept is y equals log base 10 of 5 minus 0, so just log base 10 of 5, so that's fine. And our x-intercept is 0 equals log 10 of 5 minus x. So changing that from a log to an exponential, 10 to the 0 equals 5 minus x, so 1 equals 5 minus x, subtracting 5, negative 4 equals negative x, and so x equals 4. Alright, so just thinking a bit about the scale here, one, two, three, four, that's a bit off, four, so let's put it about there, log base 10 of 5, doesn't really matter, there's no other values on the y-axis that we need to be consistent with. So there's our log shape, this is going to be the point 0, log base 10 of 5, and this is the point 4, 0. All right, and example five, the final one. Sketch the graph of two times ln of x plus three. So remember, this is two times log base e of x plus three. So we've got a dilation uh, by two from the x-axis, and we are also translating to the left by three. Okay, so Take, translating a log graph left and right translates its asymptote. So asymptote at x equals negative 3. Uh, it's going to go this way. So again, we're going to cross both axes. So let's work those out. Y-intercept, y equals, sorry, 2 times. 2 times log e of 3. Um, so we can leave that as that. If you want, you can put the 2 into the power. You could write that as log e of 9. It's the same thing. Okay. This might just be neater when you're writing coordinates, but they're exactly the same thing. Um, and then your x-intercept is going to be 0 equals 2 times log e of x plus 3. Dividing both sides by 2, 0 equals log e of x plus 3. Changing from a log to an exponential, e to the power of 0 equals x plus 3, so 1 equals x plus 3, and so x is negative 2. All right, again, our asymptote's defining the scale along the x-axis, so we need to be consistent with that. Um, and we've got no other values, though, on the y-axis, so we just draw a nice log shape in, and then we'll mark this point as 0 log e of 9, and that is negative 2, 0. You can write ln as well. You could write ln 9. Um, I tend to always write log e on the paper. The exams will always write log base e. Um, but ln is perfectly acceptable mathematical notation. It's not just CAS notation. You can write it that way. Okay, so um, a mixture of questions from three exercises looking at graphs of both exponentials and logs. So exercise 5a, 5b, and some of 5e as well.